I'm very pleased to present uh, Matt Ramsey, who is the Director of Conservation International's Hawaii Program, and Jana Young, who is the Sustainable Fisheries Program Coordinator. So I'll pass it over to you. Right on. Thanks to all the Division of Aquatic Resources staff and Invasive Species team. You know, it's a great honor to come and speak tonight and share our work with you um, during the exciting month of February, Invasive Species Month. And we're gonna, hear, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, an exciting program that kind of centers around an invasive fish called Ta'ape, which is actually a collaborative effort between the culinary community, the fishing community, and the business community. And to get us started off, I'm gonna um, do a real quick poll. And this one's a simple one. All you gotta do is say yes or no. Have you eaten Ta'ape before? So there should be a poll that should pop up right in front of you. And if you got to think, you probably haven't had it before, but if you have, go ahead and type in your um, suggestions in that Q&A little tab and tell us how you've eaten it before. Have you eaten it steamed, fried, sashimi, fish tacos, Chinese style maybe? Um, and as those answers come in, I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of incentive to stick around to the end of the talk. Our our talk is going to be exciting, of course, so guarantee you're going to stick around anyway. But just to give you a little bit more motivation, if you stick around to the end, there's an opportunity to win um, a full spread of local invasive treats created by a local chef. There's only going to be one lucky winner, so you better kind of pay attention throughout the presentation and stick around to the end. And um, just looking at the spread, have you eaten ta'ape before? It's about half, half, a little bit, 60, 40. 40% 40 of you said, yes, you have eaten it before. And 60% of you said, no, you haven't eaten it before. So here's a great opportunity to learn about something invasive, something yummy, and something that can contribute to the economy. And I'm gonna start off really quickly by um, talking a little bit about Conservation International. Um, we have a Hawaii program and I lead that program and John is also in that program along with eight, uh, eight other people throughout Hawaii. And what's really cool about the Conservation International's Hawaii program is it's the only place in the United States where CI has a presence on the ground. We actually work in 30 other countries, but Hawaii is the only place in the United States where we work. So our team really works at different, um, we work with communities, with industry and government to return abundance to Hawaii. And our slogan, slogan is, excuse me, Hawaii Kai Momona, or we wanna return abundance to the ocean. And since this Invasive Species Month, I'd like to hand it over to Ms. Jana Young, who will be giving an in-depth overview about our work with Ta'ape and how it addresses our multiple needs. Thanks so much, Matt. And yeah, like Matt said, thanks to the DAR staff and crew for inviting us to speak today for the Hawaii Invasive Species Awareness Month. And you know, one of my favorite things about Ta'ape is that it's a flavorful, um, mild, flaky white meat fish. Um, it is a snapper species, so it's pretty comparable to its other relatives that are really highly valued here in Hawaii. And even though it's a really pretty yellow and electric blue fish, um, it's very tasty. And that's something that we wanted to highlight this month um, as we look to our invasive species and our abundant species here in Hawaii as a way to increase our food security. and. Just to start us off, I did want to share um, some other really cool initiatives that our friends um, on the mainland have really started off. Um, most of you all know um, the lionfish is an invasive species um, to the southeast and the Caribbean coast. And that really was uh, an initiative that has been, it's, has been here for a while and many people associate eating our invasives um, with the lionfish initiative. Um, another one that's really cool is the green crab um, in the New England area and our friends at Green Crab Org have really done a great job to highlight how um, this invasive species to their area can be seen as a really, um, it's just like a delicacy and it's something that's tasty and they're putting on the menus in their um, area. And then lastly, one other cool initiative is the Armored Catfish um, or Akari company. Um, our friends have been working on this company that actually works with their fishing community in Mexico and the US 
and they've created this invasive um, armored catfish into fish jerky. And surprisingly, it tastes pretty good. I was really hesitant at first to try it because we have a ton of armored catfish here in Hawaii too. Um, and I never thought about eating it. Um, but when I did taste it, they, when they sent me a sample, um, it kind of blew my mind. And so I think with this whole campaign that we're doing here in Hawaii, we, brought, we wanted to bring people to really turn that um, light bulb in their head saying, you know, we do have these abundant um, ta'ape in our oceans and what better way to celebrate Invasive Species Month than to eat them. And so with that in mind, um, before COVID time happened, we really got together with our educators, our teachers, our fishermen and women, and our marketers, as well as chefs and businesses. And we kind of had a call to action in a sustainable seafood workshop that we hosted. And we wanted to know how we can collaboratively work on more sustainable food initiatives um, like our ag industry has done so well on doing and highlighting our local food producers. But, you know, what could we do here in Hawaii that highlighted our fishing community and our culinary community to really work on and get behind a movement that can make an impact? And, you know, with this, with this creative group, um, there was a lot of momentum in creating something that was a positive impact for Hawaii's economy and food security. And, you know, Ta'ape was talked a lot about. And so we came up with some creative ideas on really putting Ta'ape at the spotlight and the highlight in our culinary communities. And so we came up with the Hawaii Seafood Month campaign that we hosted in 2020 of October, which is, as you might have known, um, NOAA's National Seafood Month campaign. So in October, we really got together with the chefs, restaurants, and seafood distributors, retailers, and fishers to drive seafood sustainability in that month. Um, and the target species was ta'ape. Um, and I just wanted to give a quick backstory on this artwork that you see here. Um, my dad's actually, he's a hardcore fisherman and an artist. And one of the reasons why I love this campaign is because um, this piece kind of represents family and ta'ape and be, like seeing it as a sustainable seafood um, for us. And you now this painting has been around since 1989. And little did I know that this artwork would kind of fuel our campaign for this year. So also in 1989, um, Dar actually put together a ta'ape market development project. So. All of this talk around promoting ta'ape is great, but we also learned from a study that was done almost 30 years ago. And it was great to see that DAR did this effort. Um, and, you know, 30 years later, we still have a ton of ta'ape in our ocean. So we kind of found this as an opportunity to reintroduce ta'ape to um, our palates and our minds. And, um, you know, I, I think as educated consumers and um, people are more and more interested in sustainability and what choices we can make in the marketplace, um, we really wanted to put this at the top of mind. And since then, um, the Monterey Bay Seafood Watch program has done a study on Ta'ape and Tuau. And it's great to hear that Ta'ape is rated green or best choice in terms of their seafood watch program. So in terms of other seafood um, programs and their ratings to Ape is the best choice. And so to really kick us off and to do an overview of what we, what we did in October, um, it really boils down to a lot of COVID safe initiatives. And we hosted a bunch of really fun events that happened which range from online cooking demos to restaurant specials to ta'ape videos and also augmented reality experiences um, and an Instagram filter. And hopefully you can see that in the corner there. But basically these suite of programs were developed by us, 
by Chef Hui, Mark Noguchi, and Amanda Corby um, under my umbrella. And just a lot of our partners who were really motivated and also driven by the sustainability movement that we could create together. And um, like I said, like this is a very collaborative approach. And um, I think in this time that COVID has given us, a lot of people are just really concerned about our food security here in Hawaii. And so there's a lot of really great energy and mo movement toward creating win-win solutions. So diving in, so first we we hosted these live cooking demonstrations. Um, we had about 40 families sign up to receive complimentary ta'ape, which we provided at the Kaimuki Supra on Oahu. Um, we hosted this particular event with Chef Christine Moon at the Pig and the Lady and Gooch, who are amazing at really just showing how to cook ta'ape and it was a fun event that was hosted at their home. Um, people could tune in virtually and learn how to cook alongside them um, or after, and people could refer back to the video afterwards. So we'll be putting in the chat um, box that Kim will send the link to this video. So if you're interested in learning how to cook to offer yourself or for your family, um, this is a really great starter. And it has the recipe so you can cook along. Um, but th for this one, it was a really cool recipe. Um, Chef Banchan did a fermented garlic sauce with fried taape and a whole wet cured taape that was absolutely delicious. Moving on to the restaurant specials, um, we had about five restaurants serve taape in their restaurants for the month of October. Um, as you can see on the left here, we have um, one of the chefs holding ta'ape samples that we delivered to them. Um, and they were incredible. I mean, we've definitely never eaten ta'ape in this way. And Matt went over to Restaurant XO and he took that picture in the middle, um, which is a restaurant in Kaimuki. It was a ceviche ta'ape with crunchy fins and bones and a head meal that was absolutely delicious. We had fried whole ta'ape um, and also a fish and chips ta'ape that town restaurant put on their menu. So it was a really cool array of different kinds of ways to eat ta'ape, um, but it was also a way for us to really talk with the chefs. And for me, it was really cool to see that all of the chefs except one had never heard of ta'ape before. So it was a way for us to also kind of talk story with different restaurants and chefs to understand what they liked, what they didn't like about it, um, but also expose them to a new local seafood product. Moving on to augmented reality. Um, you know, this is kind of a, a new thing for CI to do. We've never done an augmented reality experience before. So we teamed up with the professionals who know exactly how to create these. Um, so we teamed up with Augmented Island Studios based in Portland. Um, they provided us with a really cool experience to put Taape in your own living room. And I'll show a quick little video of how it works. Basically, you can access this from the website. There's a URL you can click. Um, and if you have a smartphone, you can, or your kids, can really interact with this ta'ape anywhere you are. Um, typically, it's used for different products like surfboards to show what they look like in real life. So you can really just walk around the whole surfboard, or in this case, a ta'ape, and um, learn a little bit more about it. And for us, I mean, I think you can see a picture, but that's Matt's daughter really playing with the ta'ape um, at home. And it's just a different way to engage people who might not learn in the traditional sense. Um, and it was a way, I mean, most people spend a lot of time on their phone, especially in this pandemic. So um, I think it was a really fun way to connect people with nature. Next up, we had a really cool eat all the ta'ape Instagram game that we developed. 
Um, and I'll show a little sample here. Um, basically, it's accessible through our Instagram page, CI Hawaii. If you click on this face filter right here, um, you can go ahead and play it, but I'll, sh I'll show a video that walks you through how to access it. And we have Maddie here demonstrating. Um, basically, you have 30 seconds to eat all the ta'ape that are coming across your screen. Um, and, you know, the highest score that I've experienced is 32. So go ahead, click on that link and see if you can beat my high score. Um, but yeah, it's just another exciting way that we're engaging people to learn about ta'ape um, when they might not even be real realizing it because they're playing a fun Instagram game. Um, lastly, one of the exciting projects that we worked on was with Kimmy Warner. She's a champion spear fisher woman and an amazing storyteller. Um, we partnered with her and Gooch to tell this story about why it's important to eat tape. And you know, I think one of the, the missing pieces to what most people understand about tape is what it actually looks like under the water. And um, tape are just in these massive schools. And um, for us as a collaborator in this project, we really wanted to show just how abundant these species are and what it looks like when someone goes to fish ta'ape and what it looks like with the whole process of bringing that ta'ape to your backyard and cooking it in this really fun way with Gucci and Kimmy. And, you know, this is kind of a way for us to show that fishers and chefs um, can unite in this really positive way. And this film is free for anyone to watch. Um, it's right now on Kimmy Warner's YouTube channel. Um, and we're gonna be providing a link to watch that as well. And that's about 17 minutes. So it's a, it's a short film. Um, but yeah, go ahead and watch that. Um, so one of the exciting things about collaborating with the culinary community and our fishermen is that, you know, after that October campaign ended, we didn't want the momentum to stop there. So for this month, the month of February, we teamed up with Chef Kevin Carvalho at the Dean and DeLuca Waikiki location to really put a charcuterie board together that was focused around our invasive species. Um, and we called it the Aipono Charcuterie Board. Um, so this board has Maui Nui venison, um, smoked taape fish dip. It has boar chicharron in it, Sweetland Farms goat cheese, um, ulu chips, a whole array of different locally produced food products. And um, we could talk all day about taape, but I think what's really exciting is the opportunity to go and um, eat them yourselves. And if you're not a fisher and a hunter like Matt and myself and Chef Kevin are, um, it's really hard to get the product um, if you're not looking for it. So we wanted to create a really easy way um, to support the consumption of our invasive species this month. Um, and we're offering that through the end of February, um, just at the Dean and DeLuca Waikiki location. Um, and so with that, I just wanted to kind of open up the discussion to looking at other species. I know we've done a lot of work around ta'ape, but as you might have learned throughout this month, there's a ton of invasive species here in Hawaii. And I'd like to ask you guys, um, what, are the, what are the invasive species in your area um, that we could be cooking or demanding from, from our restaurants? So feel free to type in the chat box or um, ask the questions or provide any comments. I think Kim's moderating the chat box here. Yeah, this also wanted to add on to that. I noticed there are several people um, tuning in from the mainland. So if you have experienced um, other examples of people making good use of invasive species, putting on a plate or whatever, um, chime in. You know, we're all ears.
I have a suggestion. Uh, how about Conda? Conda's a great one. It's a small invasive mullet here in Hawaii. And, um, you know, we have two native mullets that it competes with for habitat and food. Um, and I'd love to see fried conda on the menu, maybe like a fish and chips conda special. That'd be really cool. So it looks like we have some answers in the chat. So tilapia was suggested. And then on the terrestrial side, hunting and eating goats. Ooh, nice. I love go goat curry. So we have our first question as well. Um, I'd love to buy some ta'ape. Where can I find it on Oahu? That's a good question, Kim. Um, so right now on Oahu, we've seen ta'ape being sold at local ia, which is a community supported fishery. Um, we've seen ta'ape being sold at Tamashiro Market um, and Rainbow Seafood Market and various places in Chinatown. So um, those are typically places that reef fish are being sold. So in our experience, that's the businesses that have been selling to Ape. Um, but as we're kind of creating more momentum around this, I'd anticipate that maybe more folks are whipping up some smoked to Ape dip or selling fresh whole to Ape. And on the other islands, I've seen places like Suisan sell to Ape They've been a huge supporter of local seafood in Hawaii. So um, if you know of other, other places that do sell ta'ape and you want to share that as a resource, feel free to share that out too because we're collecting um, that information. Yeah, I would also add on to that in kind of underlying the whole kind of theory behind this is you as a consumer or we as a consumer can drive things. So the question shouldn't be where can I buy it? but it should be every single grocery store you go to, every single restaurant you go to, you should be asking them, do you serve ta'ape? Can you bring in ta'ape? The more we drive things from the consumer side of things, the demand side of things, the restaurants and the grocery stores are gonna start bringing it in. Um, so that's something we're also trying to really encourage. Great, that's a really good point. Um, so PK, said, I'm originally from the Great Lakes region. They're dealing with Asian carp. I understand a whole marketing campaign about to launch, including a better name. So I guess that's a good one. In Hawaii, I think that the only established uh, type of Asian carp we have is grass carp. So that could be an option too here. Yeah, great comment. We have another question. Um, what has been your favorite way to eat ta'ape so far? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think Banchan's fermented garlic sauce on top of the fried ta'ape was by far my favorite. I love garlic and I love spicy sauces. And when you smother that over a whole fried ta'ape, it's so delicious. Yeah, Matt, for me, it's, it's nice way. and simple. Just fry the thing up. Um, but having said that, I cook it and my family sometimes eats it, sometimes doesn't. But when we go to restaurants and they serve it and those star chefs just make amazing masterpieces out of it, it just disappears in a second. Um, and I don't have to clean it up. So I would say go to a restaurant and eat it. They do a fabulous job of cooking it up. <laughs> 